Hello and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my official Gothtober TBR for 2022. We are doing Final Girls this season. I am so excited. I sound far more aggressive today because I've had a cold all week and it has left me very congested and feeling not great. So I sound weird, but I have the energy to play this game and I'm so excited. I'm so, so excited. And I have intentionally, I have intentionally left this game alone and not played it so that I can go in pretty much as blind as you guys go. So for those of you who don't know, my TBRs are usually made up of racing stacks and I'm not gonna lie, I will probably play racing stacks today anyway, but this time for Gothtober, we are doing a game where there are 51 prompts and you get to choose your nine by basically clicking on each of the different tabs, which goes through a kind of tell your own story, gothic fiction narrative so that hopefully you will pick prompts that actually suit you because they're related to the questions etc but you don't know what prompts you've got until the very end and then you get a full list and that's what I'm going to be doing today knowing that I came up with a third of the prompts doesn't help me because I can't remember what I associated with which um, I sent all of this off to my brother who is a games developer he created the game for me for racing stacks as well so this is a massive massive shout out to Kieran and I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who commented on my announcement video telling Kieran that he did such a great job because he did do such a great job but I'm going to tell you now for free none of you spelled his name right and that's fine <laughs> my mum gave him the French spelling of this name for absolutely no reason thank you <laughs> both of us um, but yeah I'm gonna play this game I'm really excited I'm gonna read it through to you as well so I will do this and then I will do racing stacks so oh, I'm excited okay now I have been tempted every single time I play this game to do this every single time um, and I'm only a little bit sorry that I chose to do that on my official one only a little bit sorry I'm gonna read through it and I'm gonna tell you why I've chosen each thing as we go. So, oh my God, my head. I can't wait, where am I? And I'm gonna go with Derelict Warehouse because that is my set of prompts. A warehouse, how? I mean, at least that explains the containers, factory style machinery or Dockland smell. I think I'm gonna go with factory style machinery. The last thing I remember is I was walking home from school, I was at a party, I was at my friend's house. Well, I don't need to think about school ever again. Um, I don't socialise, <laughs> so it would have had to have been my friend's house. Um, I guess that explains why I'm wearing my leather jacket and boots, totally inappropriate heels, or my coziest sweatshirt. Well, now that I have my coziest sweatshirt, I'm going to go for coziest sweatshirt. Um, wait, what's this in my pocket? Um, is it a half scribbled note that I can barely read? Uh, a cassette player with a voice note on it that sounds really creepy or a blurry photograph and I'm in it. Um, I have bits of paper everywhere. I live, I live surrounded by bits of paper. So I'm gonna go with the half scribbled, scribbled note. Oh my God, what was that? Nothing, definitely something. I don't know, anyway. Um, I am definitely a panicker, so I would definitely, it would definitely be something. It would definitely be something. I would just assume it was something. Um, now nah, I'm not dying today. I've got a weapon. I need to grab a plank with a nail, a crowbar, or a steel pipe. I feel like whenever I watch, um, Final Girl films, whenever they rock up with a, with a crowbar, I'm like, this bitch was prepared. So I'm gonna go with a crowbar. Um, but I'm a Gothtober Final Girl. So I will survive. <laughs> I will survive. Sorry. Um, and it will be because I killed everyone else. I've had training um, or I'll get a team together. And I feel like I watch so many shows with training montages and so many like assassin shows and so many final girl thrillers and slasher films that I feel like a mixture of that has to have somewhere embedded in my brain. And I'm going to go with I've had training. <laughs> um, Sorry, my list of prompts are read a gothic mood read, read a book with an ominous or threatening title, that shouldn't be too difficult, read a cottage core or light academia book, which is interesting because usually I'm more of a dark academia gal myself, read a book with a comic relief or funny character, that works, read a book with a podcast music or interview theme, buy a 
uh, read a book by a BIPOC author, uh, read a book with LGBT, uh, read a book with disability rep, we always do those prompts, they're standard, uh, read a book I could survive, and read a book with a training montage or extensive training. Nice, okay, I am going to play Racing Stacks next, um, and then I'm gonna see if I can double up on any of these prompts. I'm nervous about this Racing Stacks because unlike previous games, I'm aiming almost exclusively for Gothic, and I'm pretty sure Gothic is either the moon or the crystals. Crystals might be fantasy actually. So it will be a mixture of moons, crystals, and maybe some historical fiction, because usually you can layer those up with gothic as well. Sometimes they have gothic vibes. Um, and thrillers. Those are kind of, those are the genres I want. So I don't know what this was, but I'm excited. Okay, right, let's, um, okay. Uh, there's a crystal, there's a moon, there's a snake. I don't remember what snakes are. And a candle, and one of those, another one of those. I can't remember what, I can't, I can't remember. We're gonna find out, that's contemporary. Crystal, okay, so, okay, so, we've got fantasy, feed scroll from booktube. So the first one that I see on booktube, gothic fiction, highest rated. Horror matches my outfit, so black, red and white, easy, easy. Um, mystery, an orange cover. Now I did get myself some new mysteries recently. I don't know if I have one with an orange cover. That one might stump me, but we'll come back to that. Thriller, a Luna book club pick. We haven't had a thriller in ages. Um, but the Luna book club pick for October would count. That's a gothic thriller. I just haven't got it yet as of time of recording. That's doable. Interesting, interesting. Okay, uh, thriller, a gifted book, not difficult at all. Uh, mystery and intimidating read and then gothic fiction a green cover gothic another gothic fiction matches my outfits and then fantasy hauler book so I get to move a book onto my shelf oh, that's so exciting okay that's strong that's a very very strong TBR there are a couple on there like the orange cover and the Luna book club pick which worry me no I'm gonna go again I'm gonna go again because at least I know that I'm gonna be landing in the right genres if I aim for those genres again. So that's not a problem. I'm going to go again. Okay, right. We'll grab a, a thriller, not the not contemporary. Another thriller, go for a moon, avoid the heart. Avoid the sci-fi, I'm not in the mood for sci-fi. Avoid the middle grade, not, not the time or place. Uh, another thriller. Okay, I think that's a horror, not the middle grade. Oh, a romance, didn't mean to do that. Come on, where are my spooky reads? Give me those spooks. I want the spooky reads. Where are the crystals? There's not a crystal and a candle. There we go. Okay, so thriller, pulpic, easier. Thriller set in winter, easier. Gothic fiction and audiobook, perfection. Perfection. Thriller, villain perspective. Ooh, love that. Mystery, no the in the title. I got this prompt wrong last time and I exclusively found books with the in the title. A mystery with no the in the title. That's what I need. Thriller, written in the year I was born. So a thriller written in 1992. That will be more difficult. There's no two ways about that. That is going to be more difficult. Um, romance, a black cover, easy, easy. Um, gothic fiction, Kieran picks. I didn't let Kieran pick last month. I actively avoided this prompt because I didn't want Kieran to pick last month. Kieran has created possibly the best game ever. So I'm gonna let him pick this time. I'm going to let him pick this time. I'm not, however, gonna let him just pick from any of my books on my shelves like I did last time. That was a mistake. I'm gonna make him pick from three and then I will let you know which three I'm gonna let him pick from. Fantasy, LGBTQ main character. Perfect, we're already doubling up the LGBT prompt and mystery highest rated. This is a far stronger TBR a far stronger TBR and I can already in my little brain start layering up where I think books are gonna overlap. Here for it. Okay, I'm gonna go away, I'm gonna put my little TBR stack together and then I'm gonna let you know what I'm gonna read in October. For Gothtober! Gothtober! I'm so excited. I'm so fucking excited.
Okay, TBR has been acquired for the most part. Obviously, there are some prompts where I will need to put a poll up, so I don't know what the res results of that are yet. But I thought I would let you know that for my Racing Stacks Gothic prompt, Kieran picks, the options I'm giving him, and these are the only options I'm giving him, he doesn't get to choose anything else, is Yellow Jessamine, because it is my shortest Gothic read, The Inheritance of Ocarina Divina, because I've got that as an audiobook, and Mina and the Slayers, because I've had it for all of five minutes. It's not technically on my TBR yet, so if he picks it, I get to circumnavigate my TBR verts thing and just add it to my TBR anyway. Love that for me. For the thriller poll pick, I am running out of thrillers. I need you guys to recommend me some more because I don't own all that many. But I have gone for um, A Corruption of Blood, which I think is a historical thriller. The Cheerleaders, which is technically not on my TBR yet, but is a thriller and clown in a cornfield volume 2 which is also technically not on my tbr yet so again if you could go to that poll it won't it won't it won't be live still but the poll would have had these two on it and if you voted for either of those you're a friend of mine so let's go through the rest of the gothtober prompts first and then i will tell you if and when they double up so for a threatening title and doubling up with a mystery with no the in the title i will be reading a fatal crossing this is a murder mystery set on the Titanic. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they build up the tension around this considering so many people die at the end. Um, it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, it's a little bit historical, it's a little bit thriller, it's probably going to come somewhere between a cosy mystery and a full thriller, but fatal. That's threatening. That's very threatening. So that goes on the TBR. Next was a funny character or a comedy relief character and I will be picking up the reluctant vampire queen. Now this one to me, something about the way the reluctant, I just get the sense that this character is going to be really funny or they're going to be surrounded by people that are really funny. It just gives you that kind of vibe. So I'm going with this one. This is one of the ones that I got from Yelk, so I'm excited to get to this so soon. Then for a book with an interview theme, I will be going for an inter uh, an Inspector Calls. I want to call it an interview with a vampire then. I will not be reading that book again. That was not good. Anyway, an Inspector Calls. This is actually a play, um, and it's a play that I taught at uh, secondary level. But the whole theme of this is that the inspector is interviewing a family who have all had some kind of impact on this young girl who has found having committed suicide. And none of them really take responsibility for their actions until they are confronted with this inspector. So it is set up like an interview and that's why I've picked it. That and because it's a short read, I enjoy this read. And if I read it, I get to either unhaul it or keep it and move another book onto my TBR. So it's a win, win, win. I really struggled trying to find a light academia book. I really struggled. I have dark academia coming out the wazoo that I've not got to yet, that I want to get to, but couldn't get to. Um, so I've gone for a book with a more cottage core vibe as opposed to straight cottage core. So this is a historical fiction called Godisham Park, which is about a young girl who meets Jane Austen. And it looks beautiful. It's such a pretty cover, but I really liked the green. I really liked the flowers. And then there's a cottage on the front. I felt like all those things added up to cottage core and I'm not gonna lie, it's not the one I'm most excited about getting to for Gothtober, but that's my own fault for choosing a cottage core. I chose, I think that was the one that was probably a cozy jumper because it feels like that. I should have gone for something a bit more hardcore. Um, but this is my first TBR at the end of the day. If I get through all these books, I will be TBRing again. That will happen. Absolutely no one is going to be surprised that my mood read for Gothtober is going to be The Mad Women. I am so excited for this book. I can't even tell you. This is just, it's beautiful. It's going to be dark. It's going to be sad. It's going to be moody. And I'm just so, ex I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So excited. I'm not telling you what it's about. I'm just telling you that I'm excited. <laughs> For Disability Rep, I've had to rummage through my flatmate's shelves again because I've read the books that I know have Disability Rep in them, um, certainly the ones that are kind of gothic and spooky. I've only really got like light romances left and I'm not in the mood for any of those. So I have stolen Mooncakes because it's got a witch on the front, so I think that counts for Gothtober. Um, and apparently this has a disabled character in it. I don't know who it is yet, I'm going to read it and find out. For my LGBT read, I will be reading Wranglestone, which is about two young boys kind of surviving a zombie apocalypse through a summer camp, I think? Um, which I just, I bought recently and it just looks beautiful and I'm not gonna lie, if I finish this one, 
and get the opportunity to read book two, I absolutely will. I just will. That will happen. I'll pick up one and then I'll pick up two because they just, they look cute. I'm loving the pastel colours. I am loving the zombies on the front. It just looks really fucking dark and spooky and middle grady. And I'm here for all of that. I'm here for all of that. And then LGBT on top. Love that. I love that for me. So we're te I'm putting this one on there as well, even though that's technically not on my TBR. It's on my TBR now. Again, no one is going to be surprised that my BIPOC pick is the daughter of Dr. Moreau. I have been itching to pick this up since it arrived. It's the Waterstones edition, so it's gorgeous and green. I have been itching to pick this up since I got it. This is a HG Wells retelling, but with a BIPOC main character by a BIPOC author. And I need more of those in my life. Everything. Everything she writes. It's in my basket. It's mine. It's there. I'm excited. So... I will be prioritising this. There's no two ways about that. This will be a priority. For a book that I could survive, I went for something a little bit different. Um, I've gone for a dark academia because um, I was bullied at school. Not as relentlessly as other people were bullied, but I was bullied at school. And I went to an all-girls school and I survived. And I came out a bit weirder for it, but I survived. And this is set in an all-girls school. There's an elite kind of girls group who are tormenting the upperclassmen. And um, yeah, I reckon I could survive this. Probably. Maybe. We'll find out. We'll find out and read just how dark it gets. But I'm, I've been really excited about this one for a while and I've had this on my shelf for ages and I again much like Dr Moreau I keep putting it off so I can enjoy it for Gothtober and I am hyped. For a book with a training montage I am going for Anatomy. Now not a traditional fighting kind of training montage but in this one a young girl wants to study medicine in Edinburgh but unfortunately the teachers won't teach her because she's a girl so she has to go out of her way to teach herself and I feel like learning about anatomy, learning to be a doctor, it's going to have some training montages in it and I imagine they're going to be quite gory, quite dark and I'm very very excited. I just want to say that when I looked up thrillers set in 1992 I didn't realise that The Secret History was written in 1992 so I will be reading The Secret History. I will probably be doing this as an audiobook as I don't own it, but the 30th anniversary edition has come out, has been released, looks beautiful. I've heard this book is incredibly problematic, like really, really problematic, but it is also the OG Dark Academia book. So I'm conflicted. Do I, do I, do I go for it? I'm going to read the audiobook. And then I'll let you know. And because it's set the year I was born or was written the year I was born. So it just, the stars aligned there. I can't help but feel that's a sign. So I'm going to give it a go. For a villain perspective, I don't actually know if there is like a straight up villain in this book. But when I did my recommendations book for books with an antagonist POV for Middle Earthathon, um, Becca from Book Sanctum recommended The Ivory Key to me and said that because technically all these siblings are battling each other, whenever you see a perspective, it might be considered antagonistic or villainous. I'm going to go for that because I don't know from my other books which ones are going to have a villain perspective and which ones aren't. So I'm having to kind of just hedge my bets with this one. Not really gothic, but that's fine. We can have a couple of palette cleansers. For a romance with a black cover, I picked up The X-Hex. Now, I am going to be reading this for a specifically witches romance vlog, um, of which, go hex yourself and Payback's a Witch, which I've just stacked behind this, which was very clever of me, um, will also be going onto that TBR. So I'm going to add both of these, but this is the one that fits the prompt. This is just the one I really want to read. And then the third one, because I tend to read about three books a week. So a vlog, a vlog with three books works out quite well, usually. A fantasy with an LGBT main character. Now, I feel like I probably could have gone for Mooncakes, but I'm going to TBR it for the hundredth time. Behind the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. I don't know if this main character is ace or bisexual. I feel like every time I talk to someone, it's a different sexuality, so I'm going to have to read it and find out. I have TBR'd this book a hundred times. I know I have. This is either my third time TB TBRing it this year or I've actively avoided TBRing it this year because I know I've TBRed it a hundred times and I don't want to unhaul it. So this is, chances are, this is its last chance. So hopefully I can get to it because I'm very, I just, I loved The Ravenous Stark. So I feel like I'm gonna really enjoy this. I just feel like I'm gonna really enjoy this. Then we had a thriller set in winter. Now, I am gonna argue that March is winter. That's my argument. That's 
April is spring. April, May, June is spring. January, February, March is winter, as is November and December. Even November technically, November could technically be autumn, but it feels Christmassy, so it's winter. Um, and that's why I'm putting Rizzio on because this is set in um, March. Um, 1566 um, and basically Mary Queen of Scots is going to go and have a dinner with her lover and then her lover is going to be routinely murdered in front of her. That's the premise of this book and I'm excited to read it. Plus very different colour palette wise to the rest of the books on this and I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad about it and it's a short read. We love those. We love those but I've got a very busy month. My highest rated mystery that I own is The Man Who Died Twice. This is technically already on my TBR because I've TBR'd it for Book Wanderers, so it doesn't count as TBRing it twice because it's already for a readathon that I'm doing over three months, so I can get away with TBRing it again anyway. But yes, Richard Osman's sequel to The Thursday Murder Club, where a bunch of old people solve crimes. It's very cosy, it's a very cosy mystery, and clearly enjoyed by a lot of people because it was very highly rated. So that is it. That's it's on the TBR. So there it is, there is my TBR for Gothtober. It's eclectic. I'm not mad about it. I'm excited. I'm excited. Let me know in the comments down below where you think I should start with regards to Gothtober. I'm definitely doing my start to finish sprints every single Sunday of Gothtober. So there will be quite a few of these that you will literally get to watch my live reaction to those. So make sure you check those out. But let me know where you think I should start. Like, which one are you most excited for? What book are you most excited for for Gothtober? And also let me know, are you going to order a hoodie? Because the details are going to be down below. Did you like, did you Did you think, oh, the entire time Hannah was sat there, she looked so cosy and comfy because I was. And like, it's really nice and like baggy. And like, this is an XL, okay? I am an XL, but we've got, we've got sleeve space, which I love. Like, you've got all this going on. And then like, and then you've got this going on. And then you've got... You got some of this going on. That's a look, isn't it? Yep, seven looks. So yes, anyway, treat yourself to something from Waypoint because it supports me and my content. And more importantly, have a nice day.